Hello, this is Spellsquise MTG, and today we're going to be answering should you purchase a Commander 2021 Commander deck, and also which one should you purchase? The short answer is yes, you should definitely buy one of these decks if you enjoy Commander or just interested in one of the decks generally. This year's Commander deck substitutes a large uh, Commander card of the past nine years for a standard sized card on thicker card stock. Due to these cards being thicker, they are no longer tournament legal. However, they are vaguely foil etched. This means that this year's box is going to be overall smaller, ending the use of excess plastic and ship space. Uh, however, these are still bigger than the Commander decks released with sets like Commander Legends. After opening the box, there is a slide out tray. The rest of it is empty. You have your deck box, so a couple of pop out tokens with the Planeswalker symbol on them, a uh, representation of the card, it's not the actual card. This is slightly foily and a large square you can pop out. I don't know the purpose of these, but maybe it says it somewhere. Uh, inside the deck box, there is a cardboard insert, a life wheel which goes up to 40 life, uh, the thick commander, a rules insert, and a paper insert, a stack of tokens, and your deck, which does have a pull tab on it. Each deck box can fit 100 sleeve cards. The soft sleeve one don't fit very well because they're taller than other sleeves, but Eclipse sleeves, like I'm showing here, fit just perfectly fine. They come in and out, in and out relatively easily, however, sometimes the cards can get stuck in there. I would recommend buying a proper deck box if you were to keep this deck around, but this deck box is perfectly fine for the time being. Talking about 100 cards, do these 100 cards have any value? The total reprint values at the release of this deck, so the most valuable deck, the most valuable deck was Lawhold Legacies at $120, and these are all reprints, so the new cards aren't factored in. Second was Witherbloom Witchcraft at $104.12. Third was Slivercall Statement at $97.58. Fourth was Quantum Quandrix at $92, and then last but not least, Prismari Performance at $90. I'd also like to note that none of these decks are bad or have significantly worse value compared to the other decks. As well as this, they are all valued at the often stated price of $39.99. However, much of this value is bulk commons and rares, but gems can be found in the bulk. Here are the top cards from each deck with Lordhold Legacies, with a Bloom Witchcraft and Quantum Condrix containing two cards over $10, and the other two decks containing one card over $10. This is right where we want it. Very well needed reprints, which will be put into these decks. So there's a lot more will hit the market, bring the prices down. However, these prices will continue to drop over the next couple of months. As an example of Hellkite Tyrant has already dropped from two twenty-two dollars from twenty-six dollars uh, over about a week or so. Overall, the reprints look pretty good, as each deck contains staples like Dark Steel Mutation, Ghostly Prison, Sunbird's Invocation, and so on. New cards are also plenty, with each deck containing fifteen to twenty new cards, as well as three to five from the main Strixhaven set. These new cards are what caused the price gouging of last year's decks with a cycle of free spells uh, <coughs> for his guardianship, making the Timeless Wisdom deck about twice the price of what would be MSRP. This year's decks don't have that calibre of chase cards, however there's still a lot of great new ones. Archimancer's Map and Monologue Tax, along with the Chase Commander, Andrix and Nev Twin Casters, to name a few. Many of these cards will see play, and most decks will find a new card to slot into. And with the release of Zendikar Rising, we saw the two Commander decks at $20, half the cost of a C21 deck, with follow-ups in Commander Legends and Kaldheim. These decks were 99 reprints, with only the Commander being new. Uh, new decks have variations of this number. However, why are these C21 decks better? For a start, the higher cost will mean that the reprint cards keep a higher value, good for collectors, bad for players. If you've invested in a card, that card will stay at a higher price. However, it's bad for players, because those reprints will not go down as much as we wanted them to. These decks contain multiple new commanders and way more cards for the 99. The Kaldheim decks contain about 5 new cards, however these decks contain about 20 
cards which have never been seen in Commander before uh, from the Strixhaven and the Commander set. Also, the reprints are far better quality, excluding the Zendikar Rising ones, which had very good reprint value. However, it's still two times the price for the same amount of cardboard. It could be argued that new cards require art commissioning, designers, etc. And also, the increased price could make it so that more players can't buy the decks. These decks how are, however, better balanced against each other, and a Commander Knight with these pre-cons will result in the decks winning around the same amount and create a more fun play experience. This contrasts with the Zendikar Rising decks, where a Rogue's deck has had a huge advantage over the Lands deck in a 1 vs 1 format. The Rogue's deck would be able to finish off the Lands one much quicker. What are the themes of these decks? The Lawhold Legacies deck is an Artifact Sacrifice deck. We are bringing Artifacts in and out the graveyard, using your commander as a Sacrifice outlet to then bring Artifacts back from your graveyards to the battlefield with tokens, generating a lot of value with that. With the Bloom is Life Gain and Drain, where you benefit from losing your life. This deck lock runs a lot of life gain effects, so you can also pay a lot of life uh, with things like Greed. Prismari is a very explosive spell slinger deck. Play a couple of setup cards and then go for a massive turn, casting huge rituals like Mana Geyser to storm off and do various other strong spells. Quantum Quandrix is a token deck where you make tokens, copy them up with your commander, and then swing for victory. Stifical Statement is a politics and pillow fort deck where you use your commander and other effects to send creatures away from you. Let your opponents kill themselves and then swing in with an armed creatures. So overall, which deck do I think is better? I found this very difficult to choose as each deck has a lot of strong points. I found the best decks to play. The worst deck to play was the Lawhold deck and the Quandrix deck hide. The Quandrix deck was what I found was a bit unfocused. The Lawhold deck, whilst it can go off, and create a pretty good value engine, I found it pretty clunky, as the curve is not correctly sorted out, and I think it needs a bit more card draw without having to faff around with your graveyard. Graveyard hate effects will often disrupt that quite easily. With a bloom, what life gain without white? Often life gain is linked with the colour white, however this deck goes away from the norm. It creates a pretty interesting strategy, which I quite like to try out. Prismari uh, feels like the most powerful deck out of them. The ability to just sort of dirtle around, uh, let people ignore you, and then just win on one turn feels pr pretty great. And of course, the number one is the Slivical Statement deck. Uh, this deck is perfect for Commander because it's social. You get to make deals with opponents, break deals, and do what Commander's all about and socialize with the other players. So next up is what decks are the best to strip for parts or the best, easiest to upgrade. Often these go hand in hand as often the most useful decks there's often more strat cards to go into that strategy, so you can either upgrade them or strip them for parts and put them into another deck of that strategy. The worst deck to do this with is Sliver Quill. These cards, most of them, are only really helpful in Pillow Fort decks. There are less politic cards in the wider world of Commander. Either you upgrade this deck, other or your, the parts inside it can't really be used for very much else. There aren't, isn't really another black politicking deck outside of this white black one presented here. The next best one is Prismari. It's got good new cards, but hasn't really got very good reprint value. It's got a lot of good cards, however, the value isn't really there. With the Bloom and Quandrix, both have great new cards, reprints, and both seem pretty easy to upgrade. These are both tied in the third. And then the number one is Lawhold, but it has great new cards, great reprints. Overall, it's not the worst to play, so you'll still get where you are, uh, however clunky it may be. In conclusion, these are all great decks and we'll be able to f all function and compete with other decks uh, in the wider world of Commander after a couple of upgrades. Go over a deck you feel like, as, n as none are more expensive than others, like as we saw with last year. So get to it at whichever deck you feel like purchasing, whichever fits your style more. And if you just want to get a, get a deck for value, definitely go for the Law Hold one. That's the one I went for, as you can see in this video. Uh, I may purchase a couple later. However, this is definitely the number one deck if you're just going to purchase one, play it a couple of times, strip it for parts, and put the cards in other decks. So we're approaching the end of this video now. This was my first truly scripted episode. As I found with notes, I often went uh, and so, and and, and large gaps. However, scripts, uh, this allows me to uh, read straight off it. It takes a bit, a bit, little bit of time beforehand, however, it speeds up the editing because I don't need to cut down the audio as much. So if you did find the script better, then tell me down in the comment section. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.